welcome to the Dave Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Dollar Car Rental Studio, this is the Dave Ramsey Show. It's where America hangs out to have a conversation about your life. We talk about your money. We talk about your calling, the work that you were created to do. We talk about your mental, emotional health and your relationships. We talk about it all. It is life because it's real and it's right there in front of you and you got two options. You either participate or you shrink back and sit on the sidelines. I'm Ken Coleman, host of the Ken Coleman Show, which is a part of the Ramsey Solutions Network. I am a Ramsey personality. Uh, co-host this show on a regular basis with Dave. And I'm joined by my colleague, John Deloney, host of the Dr. John Deloney Show on the Ramsey Solutions Network. And he is, of course, a Ramsey personality and a frequent co-host of the show. So if you are new to the Dave Ramsey Show and thus new to us, uh, let, let John and I just tell you that uh, we're excited to be together. Now, uh, just a quick intro here uh, on what I do and what John does. I'm focused on calling, career, your work, Work that matters. Simply put, I believe that you were created to fill a unique role in your work and through your work. That means you are tremendously needed. But then, John, it also means that you've got to do it. Because, see, purposeful work isn't about us. It's not about money and notoriety and fame and power. It's about the contribution that we were created to make. Hmm. And so our purpose is actually not about us. It's about others. It's always about others. And so we've got this weird view of work, John, here at Ramsey Solutions. Most of the world thinks that you work to live, hmm. to get a paycheck, to be able to pay the bills, and if there's a little left over, make some memories. Right. But we believe that we were created to work. Now, we're not talking about created to be a workaholic right. and put all of your identity in your work accomplished. That's not what we're saying. Right. We are saying that you were created to contribute to this world right. through the talent you have what you do best through passion, which is the actual love of the work. Those of you who love to work with your hands and create something, that's a gift to the world. Mm. And then to create a result from that work that matters to you because you see the direct contribution. So that's what we think. So that's what I focus on. And then John, uh, you know, you focus on the mental, the emotional health relationships, because if you look at purpose, I think it's two buckets and you and I cover both of them. Right. One is I've got a purpose to be who I'm supposed to be in my relationships right. and also in my work. You cover the relationships and the human aspect. Talk a little bit about your philosophy and your methodology. I, I think, I mean, you nailed it. You can't go through life alone. Yeah. And you and I have, we've grown up in an ethos that is, this is all about you. Figure it out yourself. Do it yourself. Accomplish yourself. And your happiness and your joy and your soul and your completion exist out there, yeah. right? If you can just go achieve it, it'll you'll, you'll sleep well, right? And if you can do it by yourself, you should do it by yourself. You don't need other people. We don't need other people. And Ken, those two things, just from a biochemistry perspective, is wrong. Yeah. It's just deceitful. That's right. We were made to work That's hard. Right. And made to connect. We were made to connect big time. Yeah. And without those two things, every alarm system we have goes off. Yeah. Every inflammation response we have goes off. And we find ourselves spinning and achieving and numbing and look around, man. We're seeing 50, 100 years of go achieve your way to it, distract your way to it, and then here we are. That's it. So, John, you also know this, that when you're not happy in your work life and you don't see that connection to what am I supposed to contribute to this world, that can begin to affect all of your relationships. And that's everything. That's where it's so... And that, vice versa. When you're not... When me and my it. wife aren't whole at home. Yes. When I have not been a good parent at home. You I'm, can't I'm, be all you're supposed to be in the office. Absolutely not. Right? It works together. It does. And so John and I work together. We've done uh, we've done a couple of Ken Coleman shows where I'll bring John in and we'll take, hey, all right, you've got some toxic workplace stuff going on. Mm-hmm. And hello, I'm talking to <laughs> three Everyone. quarters of the world. <laughs> uh, so today we're going to take money questions, but we're also going to take your questions about relationships in your home or uh, in, in the workplace. You've got a toxic leader. John and I love to tag team those. Mm-hmm. Okay? Uh, because there's, there's a dual response there. So if you're just miserable at work, uh, miserable at home, this is your show. And I'm going to say this, you know, Zach Bennett sitting in for Kelly uh, Daniel today, he'll change your name. 
Yeah. We'll change the location from where you're calling. I want, John, for people to feel safe today to go, you know what? I'm a phone call away from getting some clarity on what I need to do mm. to get out of the rut, the hole that I'm in. They're one phone call away. That's right. And one step further, we're in a moment in history where everybody is on edge. Everybody. Oh, yeah. And Triggered. Just on edge, right? <laughs> and here's the thing. I talked about it on my show this morning, and I'll, I'll continue to beat this drum. When you are on edge, this is not myth. This is not fantasy. When you are on edge, when you feel like you are not safe, someone's taking something from you, your amygdala literally turns off your frontal lobe because it doesn't want you sitting at the at, at, in the cave going, is that a nice tiger, a sweet tiger? It just wants you to run, man. Yep. It just wants you to fight. And so if you woke up this morning angry, if um, you woke up this morning in a state of what is happening for my family, what is happening for my country, what is happening? Yeah. Call us. Can I even pursue my dream? Can because I even all of have a sudden, dream? We got a different president in and we got a different, what is, is that going to affect my purpose can in I, my future? Can I, can, can I even, and it's like, hey, let's take a deep breath. My family was, yeah. call me. Tell you something call else us. I want to, I want to put the call out. For those of you who are hurting from being out of work for a long time, let's not forget that when COVID-19 hit, it wrecked, it wrecked people's lives. Mm -hmm. Sideways. John sent me something this weekend. I haven't even shown, I haven't even told James this. Uh, so James, I'm having coffee Saturday morning and uh, sitting there and a, a text pops up from Dr. John Deloney. I'm like, oh, and this is what he sent me. He was doing some research and uh, there's a guy by the name of Andrew Oswald. I'm just going to tee you up on this. Yeah. Uh, who is an economist at the University of Warwick in the UK, and uh, basically says that no other circumstance produces a larger decline in mental health and well-being than being involuntarily, so laid off, furloughed, out of work, so then being, nothing is producing a larger decline in mental health and well-being than being involuntarily out of work for six months or more. Listen to this, John. This blew me away. It is the worst thing that can happen, he says, equivalent to the death of a spouse. Mm -hmm. And a, this is a direct quote, a kind of bereavement in its own right. So, John, you and I do combine forces on this. This it, is a seriously traumatic event it if is, you're out of work yes, it or is. in work that you hate. Right. Or when you are working for somebody else's pleasure, you're not working to help somebody, mm -hmm. right? You are working for somebody else's uh, flourishing, right? You know, you and I, we, we've talked about this privately uh, when our friend Mike Rowe was here this summer. Yeah. And he mentioned something that I'd never thought of, that when we told 30 million Americans, y'all are essential, we told 300 other million Americans, you know what, y'all just go home. That's exactly We don't right. need you. We'll just send you a check. Yes. And when you read that research, we basically told everybody, That's hey, right. listen, y'all have less That's value. It. That's it. Just go home. We'll mail you money. We don't need yeah. you. And that set yeah. off a yeah. chemical storm in our hearts and minds that have made us depressed. Not to mention four broken. or five decades of messaging that says if you don't go to college, you're a second class citizen. All the citizens. you go into the trades, you're a loser. You're a loser. So here's the deal. 888-825-5225. Remember it. 888-825-5225. Phone lines are open. John and I are coming right back. We're going to help you. This is the Dave Ramsey Show. We were drawn to Christian Healthcare Ministries because we both had young families and we wanted to have more children. And we had also just started a real estate company and needed to find healthcare coverage that would meet our needs. We were attracted to CHM because of its low monthly costs and the ability to negotiate medical costs down. Established in 1981 and accredited by the Better Business Bureau, CHM is here to meet the needs of your growing family or small business. Check us out at chministries.org. We absolutely believe in it. Back America, this is the Dave Ramsey Show. Ken Coleman and Dr. John Deloney taking you through this hour. And uh, we are the Ramsey personalities that focus on calling, 
career, work that matters, and mental, emotional, relationship, health. And, John, we put the word out in the first segment, and boy, oh, boy. Lit them up, man. We rang the bell. People are needing some help. So, hey, we're really excited. Now, we're still going to take your money calls. It was, I was telling Jeremy Breland, uh, who leads the, all of the personalities, I said, yeah, Deloney and I are, are hosting the Dave Ramsey Show, uh, first hour here, and, we, boy, we, we're going to take some money questions. I don't know how good the answers are going to be. but, uh, but Sell but, the truck, but, man. But, but, <laughs> sell the truck. Yes. Worst case scenario, sell it. You if can you never are, go wrong with if that. If you are about to call yeah. <laughs> with a question like, hey, man, I got this truck. We're just going to tell you to sell it. Yeah. It's pretty much the extent yeah. of our knowledge. Yeah. We're going to tell you Keep to sell it. Keep the phone lines open, please, because right. we're going to tell you to sell the truck. That's I right. love that. All right. Good stuff. All right. 888-825-525. Excuse me. 5225. I skipped a two. 888-825-5225. Phone lines are open. And we're going to start it off with Patty, who's joining us in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Patty, how can we help? Hi. Hi. Thank you. Good to talk with you, gentlemen. Good to talk to you. I am a work for a small uh company it's a landscaping construction company and the business manager office manager you know everything and i'm in a position where the owner really relies on me to make some pretty significant financial decisions and operational uh, decisions. He's a very he's very good at his craft, mm-hmm. but not very good at his business. <laughs> and I'm really I'm really starting to resent that I'm put in that position. I I, I can do it. I, I have the training to do it, but I don't I don't think he really understands the importance of what he's asking me to do. And I, I'm feeling resentful, and I'm feeling like I'm really getting tired of it. Oh, all right. So I'm gonna let John jump in on the feelings of resentment, but I I do want to know a little bit of background on this. Have you talked to him about this to say, hey, you're you're asking me to do some pretty heavy duty stuff, and I just want to make sure you understand that that what you're asking me to do makes you really really hands off, and this is what I'm feeling about this. Have you had that conversation with him? I've had the conversation that um, asking him to you know does he understand that he's asking me to make some pretty significant decisions? I've I've not delved into the feeling part of it. Uh, John? As yet. So you're, beneath your question is a value question. And yes. why it seems like, on I, just listening to you, seems like this guy trusts you a lot. Seems like he really cares about you and has said, man, here's the keys to the kingdom. There's something about you that doesn't sit that sit well with you. Is it a? Is he not compensating you enough? Is it because hey, I don't want to run a business. I don't mind running the books. What's what's the value question? What's the value concern here? Um, he definitely does trust me, and I do appreciate that. Okay, uh, I know that he cares for me, um, because sometimes, uh, frequently, when I give him an answer or a suggestion mm-hmm. that he doesn't want to hear. Like, I want to buy this very expensive item. Mm -hmm. What do you think? And I say, I think that we do not have the money for it, and this is why. And then he kind of acts like a little boy whose mom just told him no. And that's getting old. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got a quick question. Let me jump in. Is Is there also a sense of pressure that you feel he's putting you under? He's asking, because you've touched on it twice. And I feel like maybe you've got some fear there, like, this guy's asking me to make some huge decisions, and it's not my company, and I don't like feeling that way. Is that also going on? Um, I don't have a whole lot of fear around that, because okay. I'm, I'm pretty sure I won't get myself in trouble. I, okay, I know when to say no. All right. But he's he loves to, when he asks you to do something and it works, he loves taking credit for those moments. But if he asks you to buy something y'all can't afford and you tell him no, he throws a temper tantrum, or if you buy it and you look squeezed at the end of the month, he blames you for being inept, right? Well, he doesn't really blame me, but there's a lot of there's a lot of unsaid words and a lot of energy floating around in the office that I would rather not have floating around in the office. There you go. So whenever I hear the word resentment in a relationship, resentment is a product of comparison. I'm doing more than you. I'm carrying more than you. It happens a lot in marriages. I do the dishes. I do the this. I take care of the baby. And all you do is, and what I'll tell you is this. Once you get to resentment, resentment is the death. It is the death trajectory of any relationship in the world. And so what I'll tell you is resentment's often a choice. And it's, you have a lot of control over this. 
It could be your choices. I don't want this life. I don't want this job. I don't want this pressure. I'm going to let him know in a controlled, planned conversation, not in a fight. Hey, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm just got, I'm uncomfortable now. I, I, I don't want to do this. If you're going to keep asking me to, to run your business, I don't want to be a CEO. I just want to run books. And I promise you, you're going to find somebody in town that would love to have an ethical, great bookkeeper. That, that person will exist. Or mm-hmm. you sit down and say, I'm going to stop resenting him. He trusts me and loves me. He's immature. And you have to line up boss after boss in America under that label, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to choose to not be resentful yeah. because I'm poisoning myself hoping he's going to die. That's right. Because he's probably not going to change. And I think that, Patty, what you need to understand is is you have yet to share with him your real emotions. And I think because you guys have such a great relationship, because he trusts you so much, that if you handle this in the right posture, just say, hey, can I tell you what's been going on behind the scenes? Mm-hmm. You asked me to guard this company. I feel like I'm the chief guardian, and I, and I love it. Uh, and I, I, I'm not going to blow it or screw up, but when I do what you actually want me to do on your best interest and you kind of get mad and kind of create this tension between us, it puts me in a really resentful mode because I'm actually doing the thing for you that you want me to do. And I actually love to do, and I'm the most fierce protector of you in this company. Mm -hmm. Do you understand how that makes me feel? I think you owe him that conversation conversation. because I think if he hears it in the spirit of humility to go, Oh wow, Patty really does have my back. And I am acting like a like a seven-year-old boy who had his fire truck taken away. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. What we get to see right there, uh, Patty, is you get to see, oh, okay, he's willing to try. Mm -hmm. And that will also help with what John's saying, where you've got to expect it and deflect it. And decide I'm not going to be resentful. And that goes to an employee, that goes to a a spouse. And here's the thing, and I I said, I'm going to say it again. Don't wait until he comes in and says, hey, I want to buy all new mowers. We're buying all new mowers. And that be the moment you snap. And you say, I can't, yeah. af- we can't afford that. And he says, ah, I figured out. And then you blow up on him. You got to say, hey, on Friday at noon, I want to order in lunch. I just want to talk about the state of the company. Yep. Let's plan on it. I'm going to tell you some things that have been on my heart and mind. Give him some preparation for it. And same as you don't yell at your spouse, you know, when the dishes aren't done. You figure it out that night, everybody be mature. And then that weekend yeah. you say, hey, we just need to talk. Because right? here's the good news. The silver lining for this Patty and John, I heard this. It doesn't sound like he's overruling her. It just sounds like he gets a little pouty and he gets upset because she he said she said he couldn't have his toy. So the fact that he's not overruling you and running the business in the ground, we heard no evidence of that. It's not happening. And he's not unethical. He's not. So she's got to go. Okay. I've just got to be okay that he's immature on this, and I'm not going to be able to make those changes for him. He's going to have to do right. that by being honest with him and sharing this with him in a safe way. Mm-hmm. Not a complaining, attacking way. Hospitable way. Hospitable way is a good way to say that. Then we got a chance. But even if he doesn't fully ever turn the corner. Then the she's got is, a chance to make, a she, choice to make, That's right? what I mean by expect it and deflect it. Right. Oh, boy, he wants this brand new shiny thing, and we just can't afford it. Wham, wham. And then and He's going to gripe about a little bit, but what's his pattern? Oh, he kind of doesn't talk to you for two days, and then he really needs me, and all of a sudden he gets an infusion of good attitude, and we're going to be okay. And that's where, John, you experience this more uh, on your show, but difficult people exist, and sometimes we're the difficult people, and we can't just decide to quit because sometimes the people we have to work with can sometimes step on our toes or be obnoxious Mm. or obtrusive or whatever. We got to learn how to be big boys and big girls. I think we all have those moments. Of course we do. When I'm the big kid and then there's the time I'm the whiny brat. Of course we do. And all of us have that. Yeah. And if I can recognize, ooh, I'm I'm entering into whiny brat season. I need to shut up. All right. Look what we got coming up next segment. Uh Uh-oh. Mary's on the line, and she's got a question about navigating political conflicts in the family. (laughs) Well, that doesn't affect anybody else, but we'll still try to help I have a Mary in my family. We're diving into that stuff next. (laughs) This is good radio. This is the Dave Ramsey Show. Folks, it's an honor to tell you about the Army National Guard. Not only are they big supporters of our high school curriculum, but they also give you the opportunity to impact your local communities. 
Whether your goals are to get an education, serve your country, or have a better life, the Army National Guard can help get you there. Plus, they offer unbelievable financial benefits. Secure your future today. Visit NationalGuard.com to find out more. Ken Coleman and Dr. John Deloney with you on the Dave Ramsey Show. 888-825-5225, 888-825-5225. Taking your calls about your life and your money and also what John and I specialize on. Are you just sick and tired of your job? Monday mornings are nothing more than sheer misery for you. As soon as you get in the car to head to work, you're struggling emotionally, you're struggling with mental health, relationship issues in your life, or at the office. John and I are going to take those calls. That's where we specialize. 888-825-5225. All right, here we go. I teased it. Mary's calling in from St. Louis. Got some some political conflicts and stress in the family. Mary, tell us about it. Hi, Dr. D and Ken. Um, so grateful for you guys. Um, Dr. D, you've been giving us tons of great advice about how to handle conflict stemming from political tensions. It's been so helpful. I'm not. I, I'm not super great with it, as you can see, right? So I'm. John still, and I, I fight about I'm, politics every day in the office. Every That's what day. he's not telling you. That's right. <laughs> well, it's been better than nothing. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. you're a kind, kind person. Thank you. Thanks. Um, so yesterday, Dave made a funny comment about the advice being great, assuming the other person that you're dealing with wasn't mentally ill. Mm -hmm. uh, but what if that person does have a history of mental illness and emotional problems and boundary issues? Uh, can you please throw out some healthy ways and exit strategies to end politically divisive interrogation? And yes, for me, it has been interrogation. And could you please share some handy phrases that could excuse yourself from even going there? I want to live out Proverbs 15.1, which says, A gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. Man, that's such a great question. There's a couple of things uh, globally here. One is, um, yeah, I actually um, talked to somebody today. Dave and I yesterday were, the the call Mary's referring to is um, Dave and I yesterday talked about an Instagram post. I don't watch the news, Ken. You know this. Y'all yes. give me a hard time back there that um, I'm more interested in local stuff and what's in people's hearts and minds and not on TV. And um, I posted something with the word unity in it. And you would have thought, man, I was the second call. It was wild stuff I learned all about myself. I learned more about myself from mm. the, the, the Internet's comments. Yes. And Dave and I were talking about it on the air. Um, he said, man, I didn't know you were a liberal. I found out I had to find it on Instagram. And I said, Dave, I told you I was a liberal in my in interview. And we were laughing, carrying on, being silly. And we got to laughing about, man, if, somebody, if people have mental illness, they're not going to hear you. And you know what? I shouldn't have been laughing about that because there's folks like Mary, there's folks like me, there's folks like millions of people who's got people with that actually struggle with mental, mental health issues. It's not something to make fun of. Dave and I were having a good time, but I think you're right, Mary. And I think you treat this the same as you treat any hard conversation with somebody um, who believes something different than you, which is compassion and you just decide to not go to war. If somebody wants to interrogate you, you do have permission, whether they have mental health issues, whether they have any sort of, of um, challenges with communication, you have a right to be safe and you have a right to your boundaries. And I often will tell folks mental health responses, mental health challenges are context, not an excuse. Yeah. Just because somebody has a mental health issue does not give them permission to treat you poorly, to interrogate you, to beat you up, to be ugly to you or anything like that. And so when somebody does, and I've got this in my family, when somebody comes at you with, can you believe I will stop and say, hey, we're not talking politics here. I'm not going to do that today. I'm not going to have this conversation. I do, though. I want to hear about how little Susie's doing. I want to hear how your job is going. Um, or let's just hug. We're not going to do it. And I'm silly about it in my house because I'll say, hey, we're just going to hug it out. But I, I don't engage with conversations with people who are not interested in listening to me. Yeah. All right? And that's a, it's a way I navigate it. That's why I like talking with you, Ken, because you hear different conversations. I hear different conversations. And the thing I like about you, Ken, is that nobody knows where we're ever going to land on anything. And that makes my heart feel good. Yeah. How do you approach that conversation? 
Well, I think very similar to what you're saying. I think that, you know, she's she's thinking, how do I say it in a very kind, gentle way, you know, instead of the hard, you know, Heisman Trophy stance, you know, stop, we're not doing that, because that can also put you in a tough situation. And I think it's a... I think it's a preemptive strike. I think in her situation, it's a sit down and go, hey, I love you deeply. And I know you like to talk about this stuff, mm-hmm. but I actually don't like to talk about it. it not, makes me because, not because I disagree with you or I think that you're wrong. I, it just makes me uncomfortable. And I would just prefer that we don't do it. So I just want you to know ahead of time, it's not anything that you've done. Mm-hmm. It's not you. It's me. Right. I'm just not comfortable. I'm doing this in other areas of my life. And it just, it just, it's just nobody's ever going to see eye to eye. And, and and neither one of us are going to solve actually any major national problems or local actual policy problems by fighting amongst ourselves. And so I just think for our relationship, and this is me, my standard, not yours. I don't want you to feel bad about talking about it. You can talk about it around me. Mm. And I'm not going to interject and I'm not going to debate you. But if you don't mind, I just want to create a, a thing where we're just not going to talk about it. And I think I'd be preemptive there so that we put a boundary up before it happens in the moment. For Thanksgiving and for Christmas, um, we had people come for Christmas, and I actually sent an email out and said, here's the topics we are not going to discuss. Yeah, I, that's I a preemptive it, strike. I put it out there, right? I like that. And it, we had a great time. Yeah. And a couple of times, it started to kind of eke into there. There were some hands put up, yeah. like, we're yeah. not doing that. Yeah. Because I love you, and if we can't be civil about it, I'm not well, you're not well, whatever the con- consequence, let's just don't do it. Yeah. Right? And And I think, you know, I don't think I've ever talked about this on the show, so this is this is kind of fun. And I think uh, what I want the audience to know is that I used to be in politics full time. What you knew this? No, I didn't. You didn't know this? No. Yeah, I, I worked. Uh, I worked on a congressional race as, at the age of nineteen. Oh, my life just got so in much 1994, more fun. Nineteen ninety four, and then I was working for the governor of Virginia at the age of twenty two. Okay. So I was a special assistant to Governor Jim Gilmore, and so I there was a season of my life where I thought I was called. Mm-hmm. To politics, mm. I had a career and calling crisis in my early 30s because I lost the taste for it. Gotcha. I was irritated with both sides of the aisle, yeah. so don't anybody doing a bunch of guesswork and send me emails. <laughs> Which, by the way, I don't read any emails right. that are negative. Huh. So if I say something right now that somehow offends you, you can email. I'm never going to read it, so spare yourself. I will send it to me. You you enjoy that kind of stuff. Yeah. But here's what I found out: I lost the fire in the belly. I lost the passion for the work mm. and the results of the mission. Yeah. That career crisis is now what informs all the work that I do. Right. So you didn't know any of that, but here's mm-hmm. my point. Having worked in politics and being a guy who, though I no longer work in it and I don't want to work in it, and by the way, I don't want to return to it either, so let's go ahead and make that <laughs> announcement. I have learned a, a really clear lesson that I think would help us all when it comes to political talk and mm-hmm. coworkers and family and friends. I have never one time, John, in a debate with a family member, a friend or a coworker, I have never one time changed their mind. You didn't. You didn't. You didn't. Uh, no. Argue someone into submission. No. Never once did did, did the end of a, a political debate, even if it was not nasty. And I don't really have nasty ones. All right. But never one time have I had a political discussion with somebody who's on the opposite end of the spectrum or completely on the other side of an issue, and not one time have they went, Ken. Well, I tell you what, I made my points and I really, really believe my points. But after you made your points, I got to tell you, I see it exactly the way you see it. Uh. Thank you, Ken, for enlightening me and setting me on mm. the right path. Has that ever happened for you? Zero times. So therefore, <laughs> I've never, I've never Twitter responsed or Facebook oh. responded somebody to change somebody's mind. Yeah. But I will tell you this, yeah. <laughs> at my house, I've had people spend the night at my house. That would have made Bernie Sanders go, whoa, that's pretty far over there. Yeah. And I've had people spend the night at my house that Trump would have been like, ah, it's probably a little bit too far to the right for me. Let's all bring it yeah. back a little bit. Yeah. Everyone's welcome at my table. Yeah. And we're going to serve food together. Yeah. And we're going to talk. And we're going to yeah. figure some of this out. Somebody, a, an astute listener one, uh, of the Dave Ramsey show, one time wrote in and said, I get the sense that you and Dave think differently on some things. And we talked about it. And I said, yep, we have very, very matching boundary. I mean, values. We want to help people. We love people. We care about our faith. We care about our families. We have different beliefs. And that's beautiful because our values are together. And Dave wants to help somebody. And sometimes he wants to help them by letting them have it. And I want to, I want to help them by hugging them out. 
our beliefs are going to change. And if I do the hard work of reading and learning and listening, my beliefs are going to change all over my lifetime. And I hope they do, but my value is going to be rooted and anchored in. And I think if we did this value belief work across the country, you'd see a connection happen from the floor up, man. Let me remind everybody of something I say on the Ken Coleman show all the time. The one thing that every human being on the planet can unify around, and there might be more than one thing, but one thing for sure. Oh, I'm going to use it. You know what we can be unified around is that we all want to make a difference in this world. Mm -hmm. We want to make a difference. Let's be about that. This is The Dave Ramsey Show. This is the Dave Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman, joined by my colleague, Dr. John Deloney, taking your calls, 888-825-225. Before we go back to the phones, let's uh, let's take a pause here and remember that 2020 was really wacky, and your 2020 taxes may be a bit more complicated because of it. So if you drew unemployment at any point this year, keep in mind you may have to pay taxes on it this year. Unemployment checks are taxable income. Another big thing to keep in mind is remote working. If you left your resident state uh, to work remotely from another state, you may have to pay state taxes to two states. So the point is, a lot changed, and it may have changed your taxes. So if you're unsure if 2020's made your taxes different, take our tax quiz. This will give you some peace of mind so you know what you're facing and then what you need to do. Text the phrase tax quiz, so those two words, no spaces, tax quiz. Text that to 33789 to find out what your tax situation really looks like. Tax quiz, text that phrase with no space to 33789. 888-825-5225 is the number. Let's go to Knoxville, Tennessee, where Jack joins us. Jack, how can we help? Yeah, I was calling in today to ask you all what you do about the situation I'm in, so I've got a job, well, I've got three jobs, actually, but I really, my full-time job, I work for the United States government, and uh, I really love what I do, but I ha- I don't hate the people I work with, but they make my job miserable. Oh, my what goodness. What do you do, man? So, I work for the United States Geological Survey, and uh, just measure rivers and creeks and lakes and... Very Manage cool. the water for the United so, States. So, sounds like you're out of the office a good bit, yes or no? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, tell me how your coworkers are making you miserable. I want to know the specifics. Well, I guess every morning when you go into work, you go into the office, get your work truck, get all your stuff ready to go out for the day. You're like, oh, uh, there's, so there's only three of us that work in my office, me and two other guys, and one of them is kind of the head guy, and he's like, oh, what are you going to get done today? And it make your job. He put so much on you that there's no way that you can get it done in eight to ten hours. I mean, I almost I – I may be getting a little touch of burnout, and it may be because of him or them. Hmm. Is he penalizing you that, when he gives you that much work to do? Are you having to work – uh, longer than eight to ten hours a day to get it done, or are you going home at normal time and you're not getting it done, and he's busting your chops about it? What's going on? I'm I'm just working longer than eight to ten hours, whatever it takes to get the job done, and then going home and spending the rest of the time with my family. Or well, you get two other jobs. Job. Yeah. So yeah. so you love the work. You love the work itself, and you've got to. I love what I do. Yeah. Yeah. So. Have you talked to this leader to say, hey, um, the stuff you're piling on me, I can't get it all done in a day. And are you aware that I'm working this many hours, but I'm not getting overtime? Uh, yeah. And he's kind of like, well, this job comes first. Mm, okay. You know what needs to be done. All right. So here's the thing. So the way I describe um, your situation, Jack, on the Ken Coleman show is you're doing the right thing in the wrong place. Um, you've got an unhealthy leader. It's become a toxic work environment, 
and there is little to no hope that that's going to change. You've had the conversation. He's kind of like, tough. Go pound sand. And so now you resent the very existence of the guy, and I, we don't even need to dive into to whatever uh, guy number two is doing that's making you so miserable. So the good news here is you know what the, the work is that you love, and so now we've got to be a big boy, and we got to go, all right, um, can I walk away from this thing right now? Am I that miserable? And uh, if I can't put up with it any longer – can I walk away from it financially? If the answer is no, the answer is you can't put up with it a little bit longer. You're a tough guy. You can bite the stick. You can be the bigger man. But you need to start looking today. And the good news is, is you know the kind of work that you want to do. So now, starting as soon as you hang up this phone call, you've got to start looking for that work somewhere else. And you go, okay, I know the kind of work I love. And this is an exercise, John, where, again, you know, Jack can just sit down with a pencil and paper like I've got right here and go, okay, what are all the things I love about this job? Well, I love this, 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 and this. And and, and so we, we already know that he loves it, but we want to get real specific. And those become uh, the menu items, if you will, mm-hmm. as you begin to look. You know, if, if you pull a recipe, you know, I love to cook kind of for fun. And, and I always love getting the recipe card, uh-huh. you know, getting out and go, what all's in this? Mm-hmm. Well, that's what we're looking for. What are the ingredients? ingredients to this job that he loves and now we're going to go look for that and the good news is we can find that now we know what a toxic environment is like Mm -hmm. and so this is what a lot of people don't do in the research process for new jobs or a different job or in the interview process you have got to look for the signs that you're very acutely aware of. Mm. And so you ask the kind of question, what's it like here? How do you handle workload? How do you handle feedback? You know, he knows now what he wants. He's got to match it up in the marketplace. And so that's the steps he needs to take. Guy's working three jobs. This is going to eat him alive if he doesn't get out of there. That's exactly right. And I'd love to see him. There is a market for guys who will work beyond eight to 10 hours because that's the right thing to do. And I'm going to get this job done because I'm a person of excellence and I'm a hard worker. That guy's going to find work. That's right? right. And I'd love to see him have one job Yeah. that he's getting paid what he's worth, that is putting in hard work. He goes home tired and then he can spend the rest of that energy and focus on his family. Yeah. You can tell he loves him. He loves him. And, yeah. uh, Man, if we had more people that just wanted to cut out the nonsense and we just wanted to go to work and we're going to work yeah. our butts off and go home tired. I don't want the drama. Let's just get yeah. it done. Man. Well, this this case, folks, listen in. Jack's situation is the is half of the equation of why so many people are unhappy at work. Hmm. Pre-COVID, the number was 68% of Americans were unhappy at their work. The number was 80% internationally. This is pre-COVID. Hmm. And there's two major reasons for that. Number one, you're not in your sweet spot, which I teach is where you're using your talent, what you do best to do work you love, your passion, to produce results that matter deeply to you. That's your mission. So people aren't in their sweet spot. Of course, you're going to, you know, you just, it becomes just this utilitarian function and it slowly just beats the death out. It just beats you to death because you're like, I, 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 there's no meaning to this work for me. But the other reason, John, is poor leadership like we see here. Right. Here's a guy who should be looking at Jack going, this dude. He's my rock star, man. Is working long, crazy hours to get the job done that I've poured on top of him. In the cold, and the In the, the heat, cold, the, the heat. Yeah, being away from his family. He's working two other jobs. And this guy's just like, tough, man. This is your priority. As opposed to going, wait a second. We got work to do. We're a small team of three. How do I help Jack not actually begin to feel burned out? Right. But this leader is so pathetic. Yeah. I mean pathetic. And and by the way, this this goes from poor leadership where you, you're not exhibiting the characteristics and you're not good at your job to then it becomes it borderline abusive. You're going, okay, Ken, relax. Mm-hmm. No. Because you as a leader, as a boss, hold over top of people maybe one of the most powerful um, extrinsic motivators there is, and that's the ability to fire them. Well, and, and their livelihood, as we talked about that earlier, can be abusive. It's also we're holding over them a a core psychological component of their wellness. Yes, their their purpose and work. Yes, and their food on their family's plate. Yes, and their role. Yeah. And, and and the ability to provide, and then the ability to contribute. Yes, and leaders, stop, stop this. I mean, get help. 
Goodness gracious. There's a reason why we've got the Entree Leadership Division here at Ramsey Solutions. The reason we do the Entree Leadership Program. There are books that you can read. You can actually build your leadership skill. You can be a zero on a scale of one to ten. And you can actually learn how to lead. But John, this is a this is a massive problem around the world. Absolutely. Is poor leadership. And we've got, we're in a season now, we've got to have leaders stepping up all over the yep. place from janitorial staff to CEOs and everybody in between. Yep. We've got to start doing the things the right way. All right, folks. I can't believe it. An hour down. We got to go. We had too much fun. I want to thank our producer, James Childs. Uh, Zach Bennett sitting in for Kelly Daniel today as our associate producer and call screener. I want to thank my pal, Dr. John Deloney. And we want to thank you, America. I'm Ken Coleman. And this is the Dave Ramsey Show. intentional about your character you can have money and a career you are the hero in your story live from the headquarters of ramsey solutions broadcasting from the dollar car rental studio this is the dave ramsey show and it's where america hangs out to have the important conversations of life money relationships Work that matters deeply to you, getting out of debt, making more money, healing in relationships, mental, emotional health. We're talking life. We're talking about every facet of it. I'm Ken Coleman, joined by my colleague, Dr. John Deloney, and we are what they call around here Ramsey personalities. Dr. John Deloney hosts the Dr. John Deloney Show on the Ramsey Network. His website is johndeloney.com. I host the Ken Coleman Show. Yes, we know how creative those show titles say, are. We go all out. We spend hours and hours and hours and tens of dollars on Dozens those names <laughs> of dollars. And I'm at KenColeman.com, but we're thrilled to be a part uh, of this wonderful place called Ramsey Solutions. Uh, if you're new to the show, uh, you'll see and hear us as we co-host with Dave uh, on just about a weekly basis as we all uh, roll through here. And uh, we always enjoy it when we get to be together because we're not money personalities. You're focusing on relationships and mental and emotional health. And I'm focusing on purpose in your life and in your work. And those things intertwine. They do intertwine. Very closely. And yeah. so the phones are blowing up. So you've got a, a toxic work situation, toxic coworkers. You have no idea what you want to do with your life. You know what you want to do with your life. You're not quite sure how to get there. You've got some mental and emotional issues or family members that do. Well, all of that that's what we do. Are you and your wife, maybe you discovered in 2020, y'all have different political views, and now oh, you can't even sit by each you. other on the couch. You're really after these political uh, tension calls. Man, they're just yeah. tearing we'll take families those apart and workplaces yeah. apart and churches apart. Come on, man. Yeah, let's go. Let's figure it out. 888 825 is the number, and here we go. Sean is up in Louisville, Kentucky. Sean, how can we help? Hi, Ken and John. How you guys doing today? Well, we're living the dream. What, what can we do for you? Uh, I got a bit of a dilemma, and it's almost like the, similar to the last caller. Um, I'm in a job that I've been doing for 23 years, and it's it's become very toxic over the past uh, probably year. And um, I've looked outside, and I've had an offer for another job, and it's going to be about a $20,000 pay cut. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm not sure if I should go for it and take it. Um little background, my wife and I, we're on baby steps four, five, and six. Great. And uh, we can afford the pay cut, but I'm not sure if I just need to basically suck it up and stay where I'm at and keep the, the big money that I'm making or take that leap. How much are you making now? I make about 85000 and where I'm and where, where I was offered, it's about sixty two, sixty five thousand, and And that's really... 
everywhere I've looked, that's that's what's going to happen. It's going to be a pay cut. Is that a temporary situation? In other words, no. It's, go ahead. Go ahead. No, you tell me. Is that going to eventually, like a year, year and a half, eighteen months? I mean, what is the what is the trajectory look like if you moved over to this new company? I, I, eventually, it will it will go up here, you know, throughout the years. But I I don't believe that it'll ever reach the potential of where I'm at currently. Why is that? What is the work? Is it the same kind of work? Uh, in a sense, I'm a truck driver, and the truck driving that I do, I actually unload my truck physically. And this is going to be, and also I'm gone two nights a week from home. And so I'm going to be going to a job that's home every day, local, and a lot less physical work with it. And thus the difference in the pay scale. Thus the difference, yes, correct. What What do you not like about your current job? Uh, just a lot of uh, stuff like, you know, political stuff, like, uh, you know, uh, we can't deliver at this time we can't deliver that time uh you know we just just have to really watch our p's and q's on you know a lot of things and i just really just want to come in and do my job and go home okay so let me challenge you for a second based on what you just said sean we're missing something i'm missing something that says that this thing is super toxic because you've been there for 23 years and you said in the last year it's become more toxic and a guy who says to me, well, Ken, I just want to come in and do my job and go home, feels like if you just do that, you should be okay if you're not engaging in those conversations that are obnoxious or, or whatever. I guess, what am I missing here? Because I think there's got to be a key deciding factor on, on, on how much longer you can put up with this toxicity. Because if we, if we say no to this current situation that you've been offered – and we kick the can down the road, which I'm fine with. I haven't really decided where I'm at yet. You're going to have to confront leaving this place eventually, unless it just all of a sudden gets better. Do you understand where I'm at? Do you agree with that or disagree? I do. I agree. So, you know, can you overcome this? Is this something that you can go, I'm going to expect this and I'm going to deflect this? Or is it just something that's always going to be in your face and this is only a matter of time? That I'm not sure of. Um, I just the things with COVID, everything's changed in this past year, obviously, and and it, things are making it to where actually I'm gone away from home more and more and more. And I think ultimately, what I really want to do is have more home time with my family. Good. Now we're on it, man. Now we got yeah. it. okay. Now we've gotten to what's really going on. So here's where I want to challenge you. Um, I don't think that you have to take this current job. Uh, but if you guys can absorb the 20000 and it not make it super tight, there are other ways that you can kind of come in and go, well, is there a little side hustle that I've always wanted to mess around with that um, now that I'm home more and I've got some more balance in my life that I could do that? That's one option. The other thing is for you to take this opportunity as a sign that it is time to leave, and I'm going to look for some other things where, where I am driving um, and I'm a really valuable uh, uh, employee for somebody because of all this experience of driving and unloading stuff. And I'm going to look for some better, more lucrative opportunities that don't have me on the road as a road warrior. I'm not sure you've exhausted all of your options yet. Would you agree with that or disagree? I will agree. Um, I, it's just, I, I come to the point, I guess, where I think like you, like you said, it's, it's time for a change. Mm. And I'm just, I'm, I'm one person that is very scared of change. Well, but here's the deal. We don't have to make a change, Sean, until we've verified that it's actually a really good move. So no one's saying you got to jump off a cliff. Whee! You know, that's only romantic in movies and stuff like that where they make this big, bold change, super scintillating and awesome and all oh, oh, that courage. Yeah, there's no background music, bro. Yeah, this is happens. real life. So, Sean, I'm telling you to go find something else that you've got the talent to do and you can enjoy the work and you can make somewhere close to that 85000 if not a little bit more, and not have to be a road warrior. I don't think that what I'm suggesting is a needle in a haystack, and you don't think it is either. So then you go, well, what am I really afraid of? You're afraid of making a decision that hurts you financially and sets you back. Well, brother, you're in baby step four, five, and six. There's no chance of you doing that. That's fear lying to you. You're not going to do something dumb. 
So don't worry about doing something dumb. Let's find something that you're going to step into. We go get qualified for it if we have to. And then we get the opportunity. They offer it to us and we say, peace, I'm out over here. And we walk with a beautiful stride, shoulders back, head up into the next thing. None of that is scary. Don't move. More of your calls coming up. This is the Dave Ramsey Show. What makes our show unique is that we genuinely care about our listeners. We're intentional about choosing the best advertisers to recommend. Blinds.com is no exception. They offer high quality window treatments at unbelievable prices. And they make it simple to shop blinds, shades, and interior shutters with easy online ordering, free shipping, and a guaranteed perfect fit. Go to Blinds.com and take advantage of this week's special savings. Dave Ramsey show continues. I'm Ken Coleman, joined by my colleague, Dr. John Deloney, as we take your calls about life, relationships, mental health, relationship and emotional health, working on purpose. How many of you are just sick and tired of working at J-O-B? You don't like it. You're not even that very good at it. You're miserable. Well, life is too short to be miserable on Mondays and live for the weekend. We'll take your calls around all those things. We'll take your money calls as well. 888-825-5225. Let's go to Pocatello, Idaho. One of my favorite places that I've never been to because I just like saying it. I can say it all day long. It's a phonetical playground. You know, where are you from? Pocatello. Hey, me too. I'd like po- to I'm say from Pocatello. That. Yeah, that'd be fun to say I just like once. It. All right, let's see how Nick says it. Nick, how can we help? Hey, I'm doing great. How are you guys? Uh, we're having a blast, man. What's going on? Hey, Nick, is there a Pocatello High School in Pocatello? If you can get us a there couple is. of Pocatello High t-shirts and send them our way, I'd be grateful. You brother. know what? This is a great point. What's the mascot of Pocatello High? Uh, I feel like it it's just changed. It used to be the Indians. Oh. Oh, oh so yeah. it just changed. You can't do that anymore. Pocatello's coming around. Look at that. <laughs> what is it? What's the new one? I think it's the Thunder. I'm actually not from Pocatello. I'm from Utah. Well, oh, okay. okay. Well, I'm in a, go for it, man. What's up? How yeah, can we help? In, yeah, I'm in a really unique situation. I'm really blessed to have a job that I love. I'm a pilot. I fly a route between Salt Lake and Pocatello every day. Okay. And my domicile is Pocatello. So in the eyes of my company, I live up here, but I live down in Utah. And so I just commute on Monday up here and I commute Saturday back down to Utah. Okay. So the time I'm up in Pocatello is the time I'm really supposed to be at home. So I have like eight, seven hours every day that I'm up here, but I just don't, well, Tuesday through Friday, I have about eight hours to, you know, be up here at home, but I was wondering what I could do to work. I had a retail job that I was working before like Christmas and uh, I did that. But then when the new year hit, you know, that job ended because it was just seasonal work. And anyway, I'm just kind of, you know, wondering what I could do. I'm, just looking for something to do and want to make some extra money and yeah i'm a hard worker i I think this is fun i think this is really fun this to me is the blank canvas nick uh, because, you know, I obviously want you to do your dream job, and I think you're doing that, you know, and outside of that, if we can get you in your sweet spot where you're doing something you're good at and something you really enjoy doing that creates a result that you go, you know what, that's that's pretty cool, man. I, I dig that. And I just want you doing it in Pocatello. That's all I care we, about. We know so how this you is feel. fantastic, right. man. Yeah, you just want him to work for the gift shop at the uh, local high school. Anything Pocatello, that's uh, what I'm rooting for, Nick. So, Nick, let's put this to the test. What's something that you would just, you've always wondered about, you'd love to do it, and because we've got this extra time during the day and during the week, and there's no pressure to perform and turn it into this big-time career, what's something you've always wondered about? Um, recently, I've been looking into coding, and uh, you know, I just don't even know where to begin with, with something like that. Well, the first thing we have to do is we've got to get qualified to code. So do you know how to code? No. Great. So this is awesome because, th- and there might be another answer here, Nick, but let's run this one out. You've always thought about coding. You want to code, but you know, no idea where to start. Well, we got to get qualified. Okay. And so we got to find out 
What classes can I take? And there's there's all kinds of online cheap options. The Ken Coleman Show partners with an organization called Bethel Tech. You need to call Bethel Tech today, as soon as this call is over. Say, hey, I just talked to Ken Coleman on the Dave Ramsey Show, and he tells me you guys got a program. It's really affordable. They'll let you cash flow it. And uh, in less than nine months, they get you ready to be a full-time coding professional, and you don't even need that. But that's one option. That's just one. There are other uh, many plethora of options out there where you can learn how to code. So that's what you would do with that extra time right now is invest in yourself, become trained to be a, a, somebody who codes, and then go, okay, what kind of coding work would I most like to do? What's available in Pocatello? Uh, and so now all of a sudden, we just start going that direction. We go, hey, I'm qualified, and I'm here. This is how many hours a week I can do it. And if it's part-time, fine. If it's a full-time gig that they allow you to do remote, that's perfect for you as well. But that's just one example of how you could step into something you've always wanted to do, and now it becomes a labor of love that also makes you some extra dough. Thoughts on that? Questions? No, I think that's great. Yeah, like you said, it's a blank canvas. So I, I think part of it's just overwhelming, even knowing, even uh, you know, knowing where to start because it's like, wow, there's so many things I could do, and you know, there are lots of things that I've kind of wanted to experiment with. Like coding is one of them, but it's just kind of overwhelming, like where to start. You well, know? but again, don't let it be overwhelming. You're making it overwhelming. Mm-hmm. What I just broke it down for you, I made coding not so overwhelming. Mm-hmm. Yes or no? Yes. Because what did I do? I simply took the unknown out of the equation. John and I were just talking about this on the on the break. When we as human beings don't know something, that fear of the unknown is paralyzing. It's the number one fear, I think, certainly in the space that I'm in, where people go, oh, and, and it's like, wait a second. If I go get qualified, while I'm getting qualified, the people that are qualifying me are going to tell me all the different types of jobs that I'm mm-hmm. just now getting qualified for, Nick. Ding, 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 ding. They give you a catalog, if you will, to, to sift through. Then you actually, while you're getting qualified, guess what you're doing? It's stage three of my seven stages to meaningful work. Stage one is get clear. You're clear. Coding is an option. It might be another one. Two or three, you said. Stage two is get qualified to do that work. Stage three is I'm getting connected. While I'm getting qualified, John, I can be in stage two and stage three at the same time. I'm making connections. I'm meeting Love people it. who are in coding in Pocatello. I mean, you know, people, companies that are doing it. I'm walking in going, hey, look, I got a full-time job. I'm a big shot pilot. Mm. But I love coding. I'm looking for some extra work. 20, 25 hours. I'm getting qualified right now. Just want to say hi real quick. If you ever need somebody, a little remote work, I'm your guy. I gotcha. Hey, Nick, here's another thing to keep in your back pocket. And I don't talk about this, but I don't think I've ever talked about this on the show. Um, we talk a lot about, I went to a lot of grad school, didn't have a lot of friends, and so I've got two big fancy degrees. I also started a MFT program in my early 20s, and I got in and I dropped it. I started a theology program, took some classes, wasn't my thing, didn't dig it. Human development, family studies. I wanted to learn how um, people grew and how families grew together. I just... I didn't, I didn't dig it. It wasn't my thing. So I took some classes and I, and I wasn't for me. The temptation here, Nick, is to feel like you have to pick the one yeah. or it's over. No, that's right. And then here I am 20 years later, 15 years later. I love what I'm doing, man. It's just silly. I got their credentials and I was dumb enough to stick my nose in a bunch of different thing, things and find out which ones I liked, which ones I didn't. So you tried a coding class, you don't like it? Yeah. I'm not into coding, man. I thought I was. I checked it out. It's not for me. You still got a paycheck. You're still rocking Pocatello. And then you go on to the next thing and the next thing and the next thing, right? It's keeping your, that, that, those options open, man. Yeah. And the same process, Nick, if you got other ideas, run it out. What would I need to do to get qualified to do those things? How much is that going to cost me? How long is that going to take? And now you got yourself another plan. And uh, that's how that works. And by the way, John and I are dead serious. If you want to run by the old high school there and get us, uh, I'd like a hoodie. Um, you want the T-shirt? T-shirt's good for me. Uh, and I'll send you a check uh, for the cost of the hoodie. I'm a big hoodie fan. Yeah, we'll hook you up, man. The Pocatello High make, School make it happen, Thunder. Nick. If I rocked one of those in downtown Franklin, it'd be the only one. The only one. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I like that a lot. You know, John, we were talking about that. I want to expound on this a little bit. This idea of the fear of the unknown. I, I talk about it from a practical standpoint. Here's how you get over it. You know, we dive into the unknown. But talk about the psychology behind that. Why is it so gripping? I think it one of the cores core principles that everyone navigates and stumbles through life is I want to be fully known. I want you to know me and see me and I want you to love me. And we hedge the front end of that because we're scared of the second part of that. I'm not going to really tell you what I think about this. I'm not going to tell you my true fears. I'm going to, 
I'm because I'm nervous you're not gonna love me. So I'm gonna go halfway. I'm gonna tell you most things. And I, and can I talk to couples who've been married for de- decades? They don't fully talk to each other because I don't. If I go all in, man, that's a vulnerability level I'm not comfortable with. And so they just they don't. But the o- the the problem with that is the only way you can truly ever be captivated and loved is by being all in, right? And there's that fear, and there, we have we just it's innate in us that we want to be loved and we're scared. And so we hold back and we just stumble, stumble, stumble. You have to say, I'm going to just go because every relationship, every job, every move is a risk. Every marriage is a risk. Having a kid is a risk. Every relationship is a risk and it's going to hurt. You're going to have times when you, you, when you weep and it's, and it's hard and there is nothing richer and more important for our lives than to be connected and be in a relationship with other people yeah. period it's, it's really all true. a risk that's right you gotta go man you just gotta jump and go all right hey don't move more of your calls your big life questions coming up this is the dave ramsey show Folks, it's an honor to tell you about the Army National Guard. Not only are they big supporters of our high school curriculum, but they also give you the opportunity to impact your local communities. Whether your goals are to get an education, serve your country, or have a better life, the Army National Guard can help get you there. Plus, they offer unbelievable financial benefits. Secure your future today. Visit NationalGuard.com to find out more. The Dave Ramsey Show continues. I'm Ken Coleman, joined by Dr. John Deloney. We're Ramsey personnel. We also host shows named after us, the Dr. John Deloney Show, the Ken Coleman Show. Yes, we know how creative those names are, but they are designed to help you, and they do. If you want to check out more about what John is doing in the show, uh, you need to check him out on YouTube and wherever you listen to podcasts. And uh, the website is? www.johndeloney.com. Do you know you don't have to say www anymore? You aware that everybody on the planet knows that if you just say <laughs> KenColeman.com, listen, they know that. Um, and by the way, you don't even actually have to type that in. Well, can you? I'm going to show you something. Speak it now. Yeah. Li- well, we're just we're just going to do this real quick. So see here, I'm in a web window, and I'm just going to type in Ken. And look at it. Look at that. I didn't have to do any www. <laughs> so the next time somebody asks you to promote your website. You don't have to you say. You in your little magic box over here can do whatever y'all want to do. <laughs> All this stuff. I just know that that's funny that you still did the WWW. <laughs> Is that because you're from Texas and you just no, like to say it that people way? People think I'm playing. I don't like spending time yeah. in front of these magic boxes yeah. and in the, the. Okay. Well, that's the, consistent. The www.fantasylife.com yeah. on the social right. medias. Well, it's consistent like with who humans. you are. All right. Well, you got to check out the Dr. Like John people. Deloney show. Uh, it's it's great, fantastic stuff. Also, check out the Ken Coleman show as well. And, and it's uh, www.kencoleman.com. Thank you. Now, now, that's great. For everybody that's over over 65 they're very grateful <laughs> that you just shared that information with them you type in a typewriter Triple eight eight two five five two two five is the number let's go to christian who joins us in denver colorado christian how can we help hi guys it's an absolute honor to talk to you guys i really appreciate you taking my call you bet how can we help all right sorry i'm nervous oh um, don't so be. i kind of have <sighs> all right um so i kind of have a question <clears throat> excuse me that kind of touches on all you guys with ramsey personality question um so long story short i found out about dave ramsey and you guys um about two years ago um went gazelle and Penn, sold my first time chevy truck that i absolutely loved and saved 550 bucks a month um and then of course 2020 happens and i know 2020 was rough on everybody but for me in particular, it, it about dis- destroyed me mentally. Um, long story short, I have about $75,000 in debt. Um, and I uh, have a three-year-old and a one-year-old. Um, and we just found out that we're having twins. So, so I'm getting um, a little emotional here. Sure. Um, 
But yeah, so I'm just looking for guidance on where to go and what to do next and some wisdom. Um, are you, I said in 2020. I, are you married, sorry, man? I, yes. Okay. Happily, you'll do um, okay. But, but yeah, very happily. Like I said, we just found out having twins, so they're going to be our third and fourth kids, and I'm pretty terrified uh, and excited. But um, yeah, so in 2020, I got lot, I got fired from my oil and gas job um, early early January because of COVID and government restrictions and all that crap. Um, found another job and got fired from that because my dad, sorry, my dad passed away from ALS with Garrett's disease in February 2020. Man, and uh, sorry, um, yeah. So anyways, um, and then I totaled my car and all like I said, just life. Mm-hmm. Um, but so I'm looking to see where I should go next in the baby steps. Um, you know, especially with the twins coming on, you know, only, um, on baby stuff too. So I just, I just don't know what to do. I'm, Are you employed I'm, right yeah. now? I am. Yeah. I got a job after unemployment, um, at the post office, USPS, which right. is awesome. Um, I mean, I'm working like 78 hours a week. What are you, what are you, what's your money. income right now? Uh, well, the holiday season, which was, I mean, it wasn't really a slow season because of COVID with the post office, but during the holiday season, which kind of sort of just ended, I was working like 80 hours a week. Um, now I'm, you know, still 65, 70 hours a week. So how much are you making? Mm. Give me a ballpark idea what your monthly income is. Um, well, so my, we just switched over to my insurance. Um, so after that's taken out, like I said, depending on if I'm working 60 or 70 hours a week, it's roughly about $2,200 a paycheck twice a month. Okay. That's your take home? Yeah. Okay, good. And all my wife's paycheck as of now goes to, she works at a daycare where both our two little kids go. So pretty much even with half off daycare, she gets like less than 200 bucks a month or okay. um, a paycheck. Hey, so listen, you you walked us through a couple of things. And then you just tossed aside and said, hey, that's just life. Let's just move on. And I want to stop there for a second. You've got to pause, brother, and grieve this. You lost your old man. I could tell in your voice that you love that guy. You wanted him to see these twins. And he's not going to. And don't gloss that over, man. Okay? It's okay. His His memory's powerful and important to you. And he's going to miss an important thing, and that's heartbreaking. And if you just blow by that, man, your body will not let you forget that. Uh-huh. Okay? It will haunt you. Okay. okay? You got fired, <laughs> and then you got up, you dusted yourself off, and you got fired again. And you got up, yeah. and you dusted yourself off, and you climbed back again. And so this has been an ugly, gnarly season of loss. This isn't just life. It is. It happens. But don't go comparing yourself to other people. Look in the mirror and say, brother, this year sucked. It is hard. And then when you have a season of grieving, which you have to have, you have to have it, and you got to do it with other people. you got to get a guy or two in your life that you can be as open as you're being to two strangers on the radio right now that will sit there with you. Then you're going to start making meaning of this stuff on the back end. And then you know what's going to happen? You're going to realize... Dude, I found out I'm six inches taller than I thought I was. I got yeah. knocked down twice and I got back up again. Uh-huh. I buried my old man and I became a f- father. I doubled my, my child load, right? And those kids are going to scare the crap out of you and they're going to be the greatest blessing all in the same thing because that's what kids are, uh-huh. right? Yeah. And y'all are grinding and accomplishing so much good stuff and it just feels so heavy because you got to sit down and just absorb and feel this for a season, okay? Yeah. Yeah, I feel like I haven't had a chance to breathe or do anything. Just work, work, work. You're right. You're right. And hey, you know what? Sometimes you got to do that. You got mouths to feed. You've got, you are a man of character and perseverance and integrity. You're right. But if you don't stop, your body will stop you. So Christian, here's the deal. Your baby steps... Don't change. None of this changes. So you've got uh, $75,000 in debt, and so you're through yeah. baby step one, and so you and your wife have got to sit down, and you do need to grieve, and, and, and you know, maybe you're not, maybe you take a week where you're not going to work those crazy hours, and, and you just get some time to breathe and, and begin the healing process, like John said. But i got to tell you something. I, I want you to understand that the fear you're feeling, um, it, while it's natural, 
I'm telling you it's not real. You can do this. And if your wife has got to say, you know what, I'm going to have to get a different job to where the money I'm making, uh, it all doesn't go to the daycare. And what else can she do? And what what can we do to say, all right, we're going to get gazelle and tents together. And it's not all on you working 70 or 80 hours. Okay. Uh, but you're going to work the baby steps exactly the way we teach you. You're in baby step two. And so we're going to incrementally, we're going to be disciplined. We're going to keep going at this. We're going to get gazelle and tents. We're going to knock that debt out and you guys will be able to do this but you need more income because here's the reality i got three kids and i know that when we went from one to two that was a big adjustment but two to three wasn't really that big a deal i know you got twins and i know that's intimidating but listen you guys are man-to-man defense right now anyway you know what to do there's nothing new coming at you per se but you've just got to double down and go all right you gotta go to zone now right that's it now well they're in the power play Uh the kids the kids are in the power play man you're one man down uh but you're not the first couple to have to do that and I believe you guys are really really strong and you know what I'm looking at that really impresses me about you Christian yes is that you went through a tremendous amount of pain last year and yet you're still standing brother you're still standing and there's no shame in pain in fact there's coming a day Christian where you're gonna rub your finger over those scars like I got on my hand right here where I got 15 stitches and I can remember how I got that scar, it was painful. But John, it healed. That's right. I could touch that scar, and I don't wince. Christian, I want you to sit down this weekend, and I want you to write your dad a letter. Mm. Tell him that you're scared. Tell him that you miss him. Tell him that you wish you could meet these boys. Tell him that you love him, and that you'll see him again. This is the Dave Ramsey Show. This is the Dave Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality and host of the Ken Coleman Show on the Ramsey Solutions Network. I'm joined by my colleague, Dr. John Deloney, host of the Dr. John Deloney Show, also uh, a part of the Ramsey Solutions Network. We're here taking your calls. Uh, I want to talk about something that's really, really important because we get this call every day uh, here on the Dave Ramsey Show. People looking to buy their first home. When do I buy the first home? What's the financial you know, uh, implications of this? So if that's you and you're ready to buy your first home, we want to make sure that you know now is a great time if you're financially ready due to the low mortgage interest rates. So keep in mind a lot of other buyers out there hoping to get that first home or upgrade with the low rate. And so it's going to be competitive. So you need a top real estate agent in your area, like one of our endorsed local providers or ELPs. Our ELP agents bring years of success and experience to the table. They listen to your needs, answer your questions, and they're going to be committed to making sure your first home is a blessing for many, many years. If you're looking for that kind of an agent, go to DaveRamsey.com slash agents and find a trusted agent near you. That's DaveRamsey.com slash agents. And Ken, I always I always like to just put it out there. We Yes, we we sell stuff here. That's how we pay our bills. But I personally used one of those oh, yeah. ELP real estate agents, and it was phenomenal. Yeah. It was an extraordinary experience. Yeah. Well, it, this is true of our good, entire man. endorsed local provider program. Those are folks we use. We vet these folks tremendously. Right. And so if you, the people, don't have a good experience with those folks, you tell us and we kick them out. Right. And so it really is a trusted network. And uh, to have somebody that knows you're part of the Ramsey tribe mm-hmm. – um, and that they're going to treat you with just tremendous, tremendous care. Um, that's the way to go. Hey, the phone number to jump in is 888-825-5225. Let's go to Lisa next, and she is joining us in Denver, Colorado. Lisa, how can we help? Hi, thanks for taking my call. Um, I had uh, a question. Um, some bad things happened to me in 2020, and I'm ready for a change. 
Um, I'm my husband and I are in a good place financially. I don't want to mess that up by, um, you know, we're considering moving to California. It gives me a lot of pause because everybody's leaving California. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, California has some tax things on the horizon that scare me. Um, so I just want to make sure I'm not that a we can afford it and you know. I'm not doing something that's going to set me up for failure. Why do you want to move to California? Because the way you couch this entire question is I had some bad things happen to me, and it kind of feels like the bad things happen, and we want to get out of our current zip code. Is that what's going on? And then what do you feel comfortable telling me about that? Um, I was physically attacked. Mm. Um, I'm just I'm in a city where, like, murders are happening in the park down the street. Oh, my goodness. Um, you know, it's just become yeah. Well, that it's answers. It's not liberal. It's, it's I get progressive. It. Yeah, um, and, and the they, trauma they associated with that. It's crazy. Yeah, um, I don't have a lot of family, so place is really important to me. Mm-hmm. I feel at home in the place that I. Sorry, if you asked me that question, I was going to start to cry. I know oh, you're good. You're good. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay because we um, need to understand your why. Why California? And then what we do is we go, okay, what has to be true? To make that happen, because everything you're bringing up is all legitimate and a legitimate concern. So where in California are you thinking? Santa Barbara. Yeah, beautiful place. And, and why, why Santa Barbara? Um, it's just, I, have, I have history there. Um, mm. I spent part of my life growing up there. Um, the other part of this is we can move overseas to some pretty fantastic places. Um, but my husband's work from home now, and his company is based in California and just with the time differences he doesn't feel he would be productive um like on zoom calls and stuff he's he gotcha. was working in the middle of the night hey, is, yeah but let me let me hop in real, uh, real quick hey so uh, Lisa when when were when was this traumatic event what when was this um October okay but you know by a couple I mean I just don't it's just you can't walk down the street here without seeing yeah. drug use anymore, or sure. um, you know. Hey, listen, you don't you don't have to prove, you don't have to convince us, mm-hmm. right? I can hear it in your voice. You're ready to go, okay? What I want you to do yeah. is to you got to find a place to go, and if California's a place, Ken's going to walk you through the transition and all that. What I'm going to tell you is going to sound insensitive, and I want you to hear my heart as I'm telling you this, okay? Wherever you move, Lisa's going to go there, too. Yeah, I know. And I think part of the moving is the healing is is it would heal me. And and what I'm telling you— Get away from a place I don't feel safe. it, It won't, okay? It will keep you safer. It won't heal you. You're going to have to confront the the the— lack of safety you're going to have to confront that trauma you're going to have to do that work and through connection with your husband through relationships probably through a therapist and probably go get a professional to walk you through some of this a change of place will will provide you some relief but it won't heal you and that's why i tell you wherever you go you're going with you and so I do want yep. you to find a place where you can transition to. Ken, walk her through that. Yeah. So here's the deal. Your husband, his, he's working from home and his company is in California. So he's going to, he's already got a job and it's a simple move for him. So no interruption in income. Am I assuming correctly? Yeah. And I would, I would be able to transition as well, even though I work with the public um, and we make around 200,000 a year. Oh, well, sweetheart. Okay. Great news. Mm-hmm. Okay. California yep. is more expensive, but on a household income of 200000 you guys aren't going to struggle. Um, so that I want to relieve you on that. But what you can do, just so you can see what the cost of living is really going to look like, you guys can actually look in Santa Barbara and surrounding areas, you know, and it's like getting out the old realtor.com. It's one of my favorite websites. And you just kind of look at it. And you go, okay, what, what does housing look like do in this Do real area? math. Do real math with rental costs plus a purchasing situation based on your home situation. We go, okay, this is what we're really looking like. Uh, this is this is what uh, uh, a cost of living uh, for our, our home is going to look like. Then we go, all right, let's call. Let's go to DaveRamsey.com. 
and let's find a couple of tax ELPs out in, in the Los Angeles area and call them and go, hey, I'm a Dave Ramsey Show listener. You're a tax ELP. Uh, can you walk me through the tax changes mm-hmm. that I'm hearing about? And they'll be able to because they're experts in California on right. state taxes. They can tell you what you guys are looking at. You can tell them what you did last year, your W-2s, and kind of walk through that. And you're going to get a really good picture. And so, Lisa, I got to tell you, um, all of your concerns are valid, but you can go get real answers to plug into a real budget and go, oh, this is what it's actually going to cost us. This is where we might have to tighten, or this is where, you know, maybe we just make a different decision and live a little bit differently uh, in the type of home out there. But all of that is easily uh, acquired information. Are you tracking with me? Yeah, I mean, we uh, we own a home outright and we have no debt, so we be able to put like $750,000. Oh, my gosh, Lisa. Yeah, you can do whatever you want. Oh, I knew you were in good shape. I didn't know you were in that good of yeah. shape. <laughs> you're, um, you're good. Well, and, and we have, well, when we move, we'll have a, about $1.1 million saved. But, I mean, I, I see really wealthy people leaving California just terrified of what's coming down the pipeline. Well, but and, Lisa, Lisa, that's all real. And that's a part of the yeah. equation. You you have to weigh that. Like, John and I can't tell you, ah, forget what those people are thinking. No, they're that's leaving real. for a reason. Yeah. They're leaving because of the, the higher taxes and because of a lot of things. And I'm just going to be really honest with you. You need to do your homework. Go go read the LA Times. Go go watch the local news. I mean, uh, dig. I mean, there's a lot of uh, stuff going on in Los Angeles right now that's, that d- didn't look like this a year and a half and ago. And I don't think, Lisa... I don't think you want to go to California. I think I, you have some good memories there, and it feels like a I safe agree. home base. You just want to escape Denver. You want to get out of Denver. I'd start looking around in other places that may be warm. Uh, I think the I think the whole nation's open to you guys. It'd be a fun date night. Let's just dream. Let's discover together. Let's get a laptop oh, out, a couple glasses of wine, and go. Where would we want to go? Where could we go with this kind a of million money? dollars in Kansas? Hello. Come on, man. Come on, man. We're talking country club. You know what I'm saying? Tom? Yes. All right. I'm not a country club guy, but yes. Lisa, we're sorry for you, but you're going to be okay. Hey, I want to say a big thanks to my colleague, Dr. John Deloney. I want to say thanks to our producer, James Childs, our associate producer today, Zach Bennett, and you, America. This is The Dave Ramsey Show. intentional about your character you can have money and a career you are the hero in your story live from the headquarters of ramsey solutions broadcasting from the dollar car rental studio this is the dave ramsey show it's where america hangs out to have a conversation about your life and your money. I'm Ken Coleman, host of the Ken Coleman Show on the Ramsey Solutions Network, joined by my colleague, Dr. John Deloney, host of the Dr. John Deloney Show on the Ramsey Solutions Network as well. And we're here together today. We're taking your calls uh, as uh, we always do, but we're going to add in our specialties. John is uh, obviously working with folks on mental and emotional health and relationships and just being whole uh, as a person on the Dr. John, uh, Dr. John Deloney show. And then I'm going to help you with answering that age old question. Why am I here? What should I do with my life? And we're going to look at the work context. You were created to fill a unique role. You were needed. You must do it. And if you're sick and tired of being miserable on Monday mornings, life is too short to live for the weekends, uh, we're going to take those questions as well. And John and I both love to take on all of these things together. There's such a collaboration between us when we do shows together. And uh, so we've taken calls uh, uh, about toxicity at work. Politics and the family. Politics and the family, unhealthy leaders above us. What do we do there? Uh, As well as our specialty as well. And we'll take your money questions too. So come on, let's go. We're having a blast. 888-825-5225. I got to tell... 
the YouTube audience, because they're out there watching and looking at us, the uh, producers and uh, the engineers were making fun of us during the last break, saying they were going to have a picnic on us after the show today because of the flannel. We did not plan this. This was not... Ken, it's time to be honest. Ken texted me this morning and said, hey, brother, <laughs> wear your checkered flannel. Let's do it together. Let's wear flannel Let's today, look like John. we're wearing a blanket. Yeah, no. Never happened. That is fake news. <laughs> Hashtag <laughs> fake news. 888 How very conservative of you, Ken. Oh, Oh, stop it. I'm just kidding. Stop <laughs> it. All right, let's see here. Oh, boy. we Now, I'm hooked on phonics, Doc, but I'm going to take a shot at this one. Sean is joining us in Mississauga, Ontario. Let's see if I'm right. Sean, how can we help? Hey, how you guys doing? Good. Did I say that correctly? Well, yeah, that's uh, that's my nickname. My real name is a lot longer, so I just said, yeah, just go ahead and use my nickname. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. We'll go with that. So, I don't know what any of that means. How can we help? So... So let me tell you guys, uh, I'm 16 years old. Um, I've been an entrepreneur since I've been 12. Uh, I run two successful e-commerce uh, companies. Wow. And uh, I also do stock trading uh, kind of on the side. And uh, to get my social skills before I am 18, I also work at McDonald's. So <laughs> wow. a lot to take in, but uh, I really have a good question for you guys. Okay, go for it. So um, my parents have kind of, you know, done a path for me to go to university right after I graduate, whether I'm a millionaire or a billionaire or worth nothing. So what do you guys recommend in this sense? I, I feel like not going to get a, post, a post-secondary education and uh, continuing the path that I'm continuing and doing what I love. Yeah, I want to know. Play that out, and you're a young man who has got a lot on the ball, but dream with me a little bit. As a 16-year-old today, what's that dream? Mm-hmm. Take me 25, 30 years down the road. What's that look like? Um, I'm going to tell you, uh, we used, me and uh, our family used to live in uh, Fresno, California, and we used to do house flipping there. And it was pretty successful until uh, our immigration status changed and we had to move to Canada. Mm-hmm. So I think, I think based on what, what I've seen from my dad doing and uh, the business skills and the business strategies he's used, I think uh, real estate would be, would be good for me in, okay. in that pathway if, if I've saved up enough money. Okay. So, you know. so let me answer ahead, your sir. question by giving you – a framework to take to your mom and dad because your mom and dad have saved up for you to go to university and sounds like they would really like you to do that. Is that correct? Not really. Not really. I saved up for myself. Oh, good. So (laughs) mom and dad aren't like super, what's their opinion on a scale of one to 10, one, they don't care, 10, they'd really love for you to go to university. Where are they at? Oh, no. It's it's more like 12 because I've been to 11 (laughs) countries because my dad, uh, my dad, uh, what's it called? Works at a, used to work at an oil company. Okay. And uh, it's all been about education. I'm from Yemen, so my background is nice. Oh, not that good. okay. There you go. Yeah. All right, you so know, you could tell. All right, so Sean, and I'm gonna let John jump in here in a second and give you some thoughts on the relational component about how you share this. But I want to give you at least a framework to share with your mom and dad, so that they at least know you've thought through this. I know you don't want to go to university, but you can just say, "I talked to Ken Coleman on the Dave Ramsey Show, and here's his criteria." by which he gives advice on whether or not you should go to university or not. Two simple questions. Is it the only way for you to get qualified to do what it is you want to do? Is it the only way? The second question is, is it the best way? So is it the only way or the best way? For you to be a successful real estate professional and work your way up, so let's say you got into just selling homes, Uh, right out of high school, and you started crushing it the way you've crushed everything else you do, and you start making money, and you cash flowing, and you're saving like crazy, and you save up for your first flip, and you buy a house, and I'm making this up for round numbers, for $120,000, fix it up and flip it for $180,000, and you keep doing that while you're successful. You don't need to ever darken the door of a college campus to be qualified or to be a successful real estate professional. College isn't going going to teach you that. Um, so if you were my son, I'd go, is this what you want to do? Why do you want to do it? And I'd walk you through it and you'd give me all the answers. And if I felt good about it, I'd go, well, here's the path. And the path for you is even now at 16, uh, to see if you can find a local real estate agent who will mentor you and let you do, uh, cleaning up their houses that they're getting ready to sell. And, and then, and, and then they teach you and, and, and you learn from them and do coffee with them each week or whatever. Uh, and you become a sponge 
and then eventually you get qualified to be a real estate agent and a couple of those uh, real estate professionals who've mentored you eventually become your broker and you get into it. So if I'm going to sit down with mom and dad, I want to be able to make a practical case as to why I'm not going. But John, I want you to speak to the relationship component here when mom and dad are really passionate about him going to university. So Sean, do you love your folks? Uh, yeah, man. I mean, I love them to death. They did all this just for one reason to, to you know, get me into into education. That's and awesome. me saying, hey, you know, I understand you guys want me to go into computer science, but <laughs> I'm more interested in being an entrepreneur. Right. And right. Uh, real estate, that's kind of like, hold on. So you're telling me we have to travel all around the world, spend all that money, get here when our immigration status changed in California. Just so you could tell us this. Right. So I understand where they're coming from. It's just how can I <laughs> right. you know, give so, this to them in a good way? Here, I'm going to tell you something that's going to be hard to hear. Okay? So mm-hmm. are, you, are you tracking with my My promise to you is this. I've talked to thousands of high school kids over the last couple of decades, and I love high school kids, and I'm not going to lie to you. Okay? Mm-hmm. All right. Here's number. I'm going to tell you a couple of things. Number one, you're 16, mm-hmm. and I want you to remember that. So when you talk to somebody who is um, an elder, somebody who loves you, I want you to just default to they've got wisdom that you may not have. And that humility will serve you relationally forever. Okay. Now, I know it's hard to hear because right now you're just absolutely dominating things. Number two, you got to get some friends and enjoy being 16. Okay. Working, working, working. I, I love the hustle, right? I love the hustle. Number three, you know, there's a c- cultural component to education. As Ken said, when you approach your parents to it humbly and with gratitude and with a firm plan. And number four, Dave Ramsey himself went ahead and went to college and sold houses while he was a student. It wasn't an either or thing. And so don't box yourself into have to or don't have to. You can accomplish both of them at the same time if it's going to be something your parents are going to require of you as a kid. But I love Ken's idea. Have a firm plan and sit down with humility and grace. Don't spend the money to do computer science because mom and dad want you to. No, not computer Don't science especially. Yeah. This is the Dave Ramsey Show. What makes our show unique is that we genuinely care about our listeners. We're intentional about choosing the best advertisers to recommend. Blinds.com is no exception. They offer high quality window treatments at unbelievable prices. And they make it simple to shop blinds, shades, and interior shutters with easy online ordering, free shipping, and a guaranteed perfect fit. Go to Blinds.com and take advantage of this week's special savings. This is the Dave Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman, joined by my colleague, Dr. John Deloney, as we take your questions, 888-825-5225. Talking life, talking money, talking relationships, talking work. You know, one of the ways to get out of debt faster is to get a bigger shovel. Uh, And that's what we talk about on the Ken Coleman Show is getting promoted. You know, we see, John, uh, day after day with debt-free screams that the income range always goes up. It's fascinating. I've never heard a debt-free scream where the income didn't go up some mm. uh, in that, that, that intense focus. So John and I are here to talk money, life, work, relationships, uh, tension over political talk, uh, toxicity in the workplace. John and I love to take on those together. Um, but let's talk about the fact that many of you are still trying to pay off debt and you feel like it's going to take forever. Uh, but now that we're into a new year, it's time to get some new energy and new focus. And here's the truth. Paying off your debt won't take as long as you think it will. With Ramsey Plus, you're going to get where you want to go faster, debt-free and spending your money without worry. Ramsey Plus guides you through three apps that work together to help you pay off your debt as fast as possible. You can make more progress on your debt than you ever have. Get Ramsey Plus to start living the life you want faster. To start your free trial of Ramsey Plus, text the word TRIAL to 33789. Text the word TRIAL to 33789. Let's go to Dayton, Ohio next, where Kyle joins us. Kyle, how can we help? 
Good afternoon, Dr. D and Ken. How are you guys today? We're having a blast. What's going on? So, um, well, me and my wife have been doing Dave Ramsey plan now for about five years. We're finishing up baby step two, and we've had to hit pause because of a bit of a family crisis. Um, anybody who watched the reset event will understand this. So I have a 43-year-old Yolo pig brother who just retired from the military after 22 years. On the day of his retirement, his wife asked for a divorce oh. and left him three weeks later. And w- after that, he didn't receive a paycheck for about six weeks. The military messed up his pay. Mm. And so him and his daughter, I drove out to Delaware to pick him up. And him and his daughter moved into my big brick house. Good for you, Kyle. You're a good brother, man. Yeah. Way to step so, up. Well, thank you. Um, so we gave, him, we gave him a couple weeks to kind of take all of this in. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we sat him down, kind of talked to him about the getting back on his feet money-wise and watched the reset event. We, we're starting to go through – um, financial piece with him. We, me and my wife have uh, Ramsey Plus, and so we're doing the online classes with him. I told him, I said, you got to get a job. Mm-hmm. You can't mope around forever. I said, I don't care if you don't find a career right now, but I need you to get a job. So he did. He did finally get a job. Um, but what we're what I'm trying to get out to to find out today is if there's different things we should be doing, or if what we're doing is the correct thing. Mm-hmm. We've told him. There, we're we're going to have him stay here till at least June when his daughter's out of school. Uh, she's in fifth grade. Um, that way, she's not having to switch back and forth between new houses and all of that. Along with all of this, through all of this, we've learned that she has had a lot of trauma, mentally, a lot of damage, um, as he has as well. But we've learned hers has gone on for quite a few years. We're working on getting her into some therapy. We're going to get him into some therapy. I'm just trying to see. What else would you guys recommend for us to do with them, or does this sound like a great plan? So there's a couple of things here. Number one, I want to reiterate, man, um, you're a brother who stepped up in a time of need, and I'm grateful that there should be – I wish there were more brothers like you in the country. So I, I'm I'm grateful <laughs> to you. know you're in our community, man. Um, so I want to step back 30,000 feet and look at your brother and – you probably know this intellectually, but I want you to hear this empathetically. I want you to hear this in your heart. Your brother has lost everything but his daughter. And I don't mean um, tangibly. I mean identity. He did the military for this long. That is who he was, right? Absolutely. That's an identity. And he'll tell you that. He was a married man with a co-pilot and when you're married that long somebody else is is an arm and a leg right and so he is recovering out of ash and it's easy to um see that and say man you got a couple of weeks brother you got to get up and shake it off i need you to hear and feel that he has had every single leaf shaken off that tree and he's gonna have to grow from the floor up while also raising a daughter now that should be enough why but i don't want to minimize what a big deal this is the second thing is I want you to orient yourself in this way. I want you and your wife to get some really firm boundaries about dates, about time, about money. And then I want you to keep this in the forefront of your head. Your brother is not a problem to fix. I don't want you to use the word damage when you're talking to his daughter as though she's a a truck that hit a tree. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, I would never mention that to her. Right, right. But I, I want you to... Think of your brother and your niece as somebody, as people to be with, not as puzzles to solve. And you're yeah. going to you heal. You're going to help be a part of their healing journey. You can't heal him, man. He's got to decide he wants to do this, but you can connect with him. So you've offered him a place to stay, which is above and beyond. You're going to provide some boundaries and structure for him and some encouragement. And then you're just going to be with him and you're going to hold firm to those boundaries, but you're going to be with him. And if you can afford counseling for his daughter, great. If you can lean into some of those things, great. But I want you to let him know you are there to talk to him. But man, he needs to go find a group. He needs to, he's got to have a professional to walk through this season with him. And um, you can't do that walking for him. You can just encourage him and be with him and be with him. Right. Yeah. Kyle, you're doing great. The answer is that's an unbelievable amount of things you're doing for your brother, and because you're in Ramsey Plus, I'd bring him in, make sure he's well, gone here's the deal. through stay FPU. On the, stay on the line. We're going to give you Ramsey Plus for your brother. Oh, look at that. Um, stay on the line. Zach's going to um, get it, get his contact info so he has his own. He can have his own yep. app, and he can learn to use this yep. stuff on his own and not be hitched to his little brother. But other than that, I mean, you've got you've got a great plan here, and that's wonderful. The only other thing is, is over time, you know, is he's just 
re-entering the workforce, uh, I would tell him to listen to my show. Let him listen to it. It's a podcast. Just recommend it. He can watch it on YouTube. Let's let's help him figure out what his sweet spot is outside of the military, what his contribution zone is, uh, because that will bring tremendous meaning. You know, we talked about this earlier. John and I, um, John texted me something on Saturday morning. Um, and, and we know from, from, from psychology studies and, and the neuroscience and all this, you were reading some stuff that, uh, being without a job or not having some type of connection to your work, um, is, is trauma on the level of losing a loved one. And he's already gone through a trauma with the divorce. Right. Um, and so he's in a heavy, heavy time. So helping him find some joy Mm -hmm. in his work will allow him to heal, I believe, faster uh, with the therapy, of course, and coming home and be able to give himself fully to his daughter where he feels like, okay, I've got this. Right. But what he, but coming home to a brother who's judging him is going to hurt. No, right? but come he's, this guy's not. No, Kyle's I, well, not going to judge him. No. But, but Kyle's a guy who's going to come up with a good plan. Yeah. And he's going to say, you following the plan? You following the plan? And I want Kyle to be a, a, yeah. a great boundary setter. I want Kyle to be a, that great brother. But I want him to come home and say, Dude, it's so good to see you, man. Yeah, of course. And I'm going to give you a hard hug. Yep. Hard hug, man. And then once we get the kids to wed, we're going to go on the back porch yeah. and just hang out. Yeah. Because you're my freaking brother. Yeah. I love you. I does, love, that, does that make sense? Of course it makes sense. Yeah. I think it's the right thing. I you know, it. I don't sense any judgment in Kyle. And I think, John, what you're saying, and, and Kyle, what you got to get here is don't be overzealous. You're not dad now. You're, yeah. You're you, brother. You've offered him these things. He's a big boy, mm-hmm. to your point, John. And, uh, you, you know, know, on the back porch, you're going to say, Brother, you got two months left. Yeah, right? you can remind him that he's got to go. But you're loving on him and going, right. man, I'm so excited about the next chapter and reminding him of stuff, doing some fun things with him. You know, yes. what you guys used to do with brothers, I think it'd be fun to recreate some of that. You know, I know my brother came in town for Thanksgiving. and Did y'all toilet paper at a house? We did not. Oh, man. Uh, you can't do that anymore. You I love that now. that's where you go. <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I'm taking us to some Hallmark moment and you interrupt and say, did you guys go TP somebody's house? No, we went and played putt-putt, of miniature golf, because we used to come compete and so we were out there with my dad it was like it was like time had suspended and we went back you know do some of that brotherly love stuff where you guys remember being innocent and there wasn't divorce and there wasn't all kinds of problems it was just we're bros man you and me that's right you know and i think that's a really good thing to do but you're a good man what a good guy i'm gonna nominate kyle for brother of the year so uh, send your votes to I don't know where. Pocatello, hey. Idaho. <laughs> Pocatello, Idaho. Yes, I need that hoodie, man. All right, listen. We're still just getting warmed up. We're not even close to done. More of your calls. More of your questions. More breakthrough. More hope. Coming up on the Dave Ramsey Show. Cliff and I joined Christian Healthcare Ministries because we really liked the concept of uh, Christians sharing each other's burdens. And we really experienced that firsthand when Cliff was diagnosed with heart disease. It was just such a relief to know that financial burden was going to be taken care of. CHM is the original and longest serving health cost sharing ministry. Get started today and check us out at chministries.org. The Dave Ramsey Show continues. I'm Ken Coleman, joined by my colleague, Dr. John Deloney, as we take your calls, 888-825-5225. Hey, you need to find out for yourself why Blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window covering. You get free samples, free shipping, and with the new promos they run every month, you'll save even more. Use the promo code RAMSEY to get the best deals. Rules and restrictions apply. Today's question comes from Kristen Indiana in Indiana. She says, I've been in my job for almost 10 years. And I make about $65,000 a year, and I'm about halfway through baby step three. I enjoy most of my job, but I have some very stressful duties that I don't enjoy about my job as well. Is it worth looking elsewhere and taking a pay cut to reduce stress and ultimately be happier at my job? 
Currently, I'm looking at a pay cut of about $20,000. All right, in this situation, Kristen, because you are so close to getting through baby step three, which gets that fully funded emergency fund, that's three to six months, is what we teach here at Ramsey Solutions. That's such a big milestone, and it's a game changer financially. In this situation, I would not currently take a pay cut of about $20,000. I'm okay with pay cuts only when you have to go backwards to get in, but there is a short-term sacrifice and you know that you're going to climb the ladder and eventually replace that income and you're in a financial position, i.e. you're not in debt, you've got an emergency fund and you've, you've made some changes in your budget to be able to absorb that pay cut and you're not going backwards. So in this situation, here's what I want you to do. Is it worth looking elsewhere? Absolutely. But let's keep on looking because you enjoy most of your job. That's a good thing, Kristen. I talk to people every day on the Ken Coleman Show who hate every part of their job. So can I weigh in here? Uh, yeah, in just a second. Okay, all right. Last part. I, I'm, I'm good. No. But here's the last part on yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because she enjoys most of her job, um, what I'm doing is I'm looking for something that she can step into mm-hmm. that doesn't have as big of a pay cut. 20000 a little bit too big. I'm wanting her to look around some more right. and then do some other things to try to reduce that stress uh, that she is dealing with. That that would be my position on that one. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Weigh in, please. So you, you take calls about jobs all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, I used to have conversations with my college students for years and years about job quality. Yeah. I'm, I may be out to lunch here, so help me. Is there such thing as a perfect job that doesn't have parts of the job that are stressful? No. Is a dream job mean there's not certain forms that you have to fill out that you hate that part or no. that you got to do budgets at the end of a, of no. a term or, no. or, or, or? Well, I'm in my dream job and there's stuff I have to do here at Ramsey Solutions sometimes. There's certain days where I've got to do makeup. about 5 to 10%. Yeah, that's one. That itches our face. I have to sneeze I, I don't for know three how, hours. I don't know how women do that, it's incredible. by the way, because I can't wait to take that makeup off. It is itchy. Uh, first of all, I don't know what I'm doing. If you get up close to me, and please don't, right. social distancing and all. Exactly. It looks like I've put it on like cake batter because I don't know how they do it. All I do is I just rub that thing around. And Dave conveniently left that part out of any of oh, my yeah. interviews. That was not in any nope. of the uh, interviews that we would wear makeup when we're on uh, stage under the lights or in these bright studios. But we digress. We lost. We got off track. But there are things in every job. Yes. That just because it's hard, just because it's crappy, just because yeah. you have to do it every day yes. or every month doesn't mean it's not your dream job, that's right. right? Well, that's, that's exactly right. That's why I said, look, you love most of your job. Be a big girl, put your big girl pants on, and let's figure out how to deal with that. But if it is something that is toxic and she loves most of the job, but there is toxicity, <laughs> that's eventually going to wear you down. You know that. That's, so in that's that right. situation, I go, let's start looking. But until then, let's have an attitude of gratitude. Mm-hmm. So that's my feeling. What do my emotions need to be? I'm grateful for this job and what it provides to me, right. uh, stability and safety, and a, and a launching pad if we need to move. And then my mindset needs to be, you know what? I enjoy most of my job. I can figure out a way That's to good. deal yeah. with difficult people or difficult circumstances. Right. Yes, you're absolutely right. Okay. Yeah. And by the way, people say all the time, Ken, uh, is it okay if it's a dream job if I love 80%? Of I go, yeah. Absolutely. Again, you do what you have to do to do what you want to do. Love it. You know, which sometimes I really like making money. I hate paying taxes. Ah. I don't get to just say, "Wait, well, now this tax thing right. it really stresses me out. I I don't like this." Right. See how that works out for you. <laughs> or, you the, or the marriage part. We had our oh, first yeah. fight. I'm out. Obviously, yeah. this you weren't yes. the one because we I, had a disagreement. Yeah. I love date night and romance. But I don't like this fighting and you reminding me that I left my socks in the bathroom again. Oh, you want me to bathe every week? Well, then you're not the one. For, no, dude. Yeah. Everything's got hard stuff in it, right? Yeah, that's it. Be a grown up. Man. All right, let's go We're solving to, problems. We are. Washington boy. needs to call us. Yeah. And the depth of that advice, by the way, was, you know. It's exactly, it's worth every penny people paid for it. Good call. Let's go to Mike, who's waiting for us in Los Angeles, California. Mike, how can we help? Hey, guys. How's it going today? We're having fun. What's going on with you? How can we help you? I'm coming in today to see where I should really take the next step. I'm 22 right now, and I finished up college last year. I don't have a job, and I got my undergraduate degree in a field that I'm second-guessing, which is law. 
And I don't know if I should start a nine to five or work for myself by investing since I have about 120,000 in cash available to me right now and paid off all my debt, no car payment. And I live at home. Um, what do you guys recommend? Wow, Mike. Okay, so you're in a good position. I didn't expect to hear that from the 22-year-old unemployed college grad. Um, <laughs> when you say work for yourself by investing, unpack that a little bit more. Give me some details. What's that look like in your head? Sure. In my head, that looks more like investing in real estate, either through property flipping or purchasing home and renting them out or possibly opening a business. And the thing is, I want to know what that business would be. Yeah. So I don't know what direction to walk toward. Okay, great. So you have some general ideas. And so what I want you to do is a process called clarify and verify. And this is, uh, this is in the book, the proximity principle, my best selling book, I'm going to give you a copy of it. Okay, when we're done with the call. So because it's going to walk you through this. All right. But here's the point. I want you to start now again, Los Angeles is in lockdown. So we've got an asterisk here with this advice. But when you can start getting out and and shadowing some real estate professionals, people who flip homes, maybe some uh, contractors, guys that build homes, some successful realtors, I kind of like you at 22, you're in good financial shape and you're living at home. I kind of like you getting a job for a successful real estate professional, uh, either a developer or a realtor who dips in, you know, kind of sells homes, brokers homes, but also does some flipping themselves. And I like you just taking an hourly job for them and becoming a human sponge. And you learn it all. Everything. And, and here's, that's where Clarify Verify comes in. I learn everything there is to learn about this particular mm-hmm. piece of this. Because real estate professionals, one piece of it. Right. Land developers, another piece. Uh, corporate office developers, another piece. Dealing with general contractors. General contractors another is another piece. And by you tra- uh, following, uh, excuse me, uh, 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 working for somebody, they're paying you to get a master's degree and actually running that business. And you sure. find out, oh, I thought I wanted to run this for myself. I thought I wanted to flip houses. It's yeah. way more fun on HGTV than yeah. in real life. Yeah, I don't actually like that. Mike, are you tracking with me so far? Yes. So that's what I want you to do. I want you doing a lot of clarifying and verifying. I want you to get, here's what the proximity principle says. And I wrote an entire book on it. And it came out of the, the, the uh, Ken Coleman show giving advice. The proximity principle says, in order to do what Mike wants to do, and by the way, we can keep plugging in some different answers here. Mm-hmm. So I like it being fill in the blank, Mike, because you're 22. So now's the time to explore and discover. So in order to do what Mike wants to do, let's call it house flipper, real estate, impresario, Okay. Uh, Mike's got to be around people that do that and are doing that. And successfully, by the way, not in title only. And then he's got to be in places where that is happening. So it's people in places. Here's the formula. The right people plus the right places equals opportunity. Opportunity to learn. Opportunity to do. That would be the experience So the education, real-time education, real street education. And then real experience. And I go, hmm, I do want to do this. I've learned how to do it. I'm going to bust it and make some money and be really, really smart. And Mike, I want to remind you, uh, I like the position that you're in, but the Ramsey way is you better keep saving, get to work. You need a nine to five pretty quick. Keep working, keep saving, pay cash for that first dump and then flip it. If that is, in fact, the way you want to do it, do it cash so you can win. Hang on. My best-selling book, The Proximity Principle, is waiting for you. Zach will take care of you. For the rest of you, you hang on, too. We have more of The Dave Ramsey Show coming right up. Ramsey show continues on. I'm Ken Coleman, joined by my colleague, John Deloney. And we are taking your calls, 888-825-5225. Our scripture of the day, Romans 12, 6, having gifts that defer according to the grace given to us, let us use them if prophecy in proportion to our faith. Our quote of the day from Maya Angelou, I did then what I knew how to do. Now that I know better, I do better. It's one of my favorite quotes in the whole wide world. By the way, if you ever just want to feel good, you're having a dark day, 
you know, and you're just like, I'm tired of negativity. Go just do a little search for Maya Angelou on YouTube and just watch her drop some gold. Man. You know, that was a woman who had a true gift with words and uh, a legend. By the way, I want to mention, we lost a we lost a a legend today. We did, man. A legend in the sports world. And also a man defined in 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 his latter years and even in his career uh, by as much grace as as he had talent and that's Hank Aaron yeah heartbreaking man I mean you're a true prince of a man yeah um you know uh you he think of what he went and through experienced things that what we he experienced never... we could never understand and to break Babe Ruth's home run record and the vitriol and yeah. the, and and the nastiness that he endured and yet uh, by all accounts, and I lived in the Atlanta area for 11 years. Uh, he's a legend of the world, but certainly he's a legend in the Atlanta area. Right. And uh, sad to see that uh, he passed away today. Yeah, it's a Hammer yeah, and Hank. It just keeps coming, man. Your son's name is Hank. It is, yeah. Hammer and Hank. What a great nickname. Yeah, Hank's one of Hank Aaron's. Yeah, it's one of the classiest humans to live, man. Really so, true. Yeah, really true. Triple eight eight two five five two two five is the number. Let's go to Burbank, California, right in the heart of Hollywood area. Benjamin is there. Benjamin, how can we help? Hi guys, thanks so much for taking my call. You bet. What's going on? Hey, so I, you know, being in Burbank, I work in the entertainment industry. I used to be a sound editor for cartoons. Oh, um, cool. And it's a great job. Totally loved it pandemic hit and you know everything went to went to doo doo and so i was left with uh <laughs> you know no job went to doo doo i'm not laughing at you i'm laughing yeah. with you brother benjamin you need to understand that that john his inner seven-year-old came out when you said doo doo there was no way he was going to make it through the segment without <laughs> laughing out loud i'll give you that one all yeah, right I appreciate it so well you done, were a man. sound editor for cartoons and you got laid off uh due to covid yeah, pretty much. The you know, basically furloughed. So I'm okay. under okay, whenever whenever work comes back we'll call you type of thing. Okay. Um so I was left out dry with okay, what do I do? I had just moved here. I was I've lived here for three months and then the pandemic hit. So I just made a huge move. Yeah. And so I was going great. I'm out of college. Uh I graduated with um two degrees. Uh I mastered or I'm sorry, I got my bachelor's in music industry studies, and I got another bachelor's in finance. And so this show has been great. Uh, I totally love it. So thank you guys for uh, having me. Sure, it. you bet. So what can we so do to help? My question is, yeah. yeah, so I have no debt. I've got about 24000 in investments. Um, I have 2500 in emergency funds. And I am currently in a place where I started a business, um, an online business, uh, where I sell guitar picks with flowers inside them. It's been doing super well. And uh, I came up with this idea on my own. Um, and I was leaning, okay, well, if all jobs are out in the middle of nothing, I'm gonna have to make my own job. And so I was doing this for a while and, you know, eating into my savings just to stay alive. And then all of a sudden in November, it began to pick up. And so I, I was running this job um, by my own and uh, just innovating and everything like that. Now, long here comes my friend who hooks me up with a stay-at-home job. Um, I'm working part-time there, and I was able to kind of gather my feet a little bit. So as I'm kind of gathering my feet, working part-time for this one place, work from home, I'm still running my business. I'm working about one day a week. And so I'm seeing a lot of potential for this business and a lot of potential for growth. I'm working one day a week, and I'm making about half of my monthly paycheck uh, at this part-time job. Which is how much? Give me a ballpark number. So working part-time hourly, I make about something around like 2,200 a month. Okay. Um, And if I run my business, you know, if I put in one day's effort in a week for my business, I'll make about at max, you know, a thousand a month. Something like that. Will it scale with you? Meaning, is that all it takes to fill the pick orders you have? Or if you worked every day like that, would it scale up that way? Uh, I believe it would scale up because I'm constantly selling out of stuff. The only reason I'm not making more sales is because I run out of stock. Okay. What are you doing in that one day that's driving all of those sales so that if you put in, let's say, two days a week or three days a week, mm-hmm. you, you feel like you're going to see the sales come with that? What are you doing? Right. So... My, my day-to-day of working, um, well, I, I manufacture them. Uh, and so 
that takes about, I don't know, an hour or two a day. And then the rest is just managing the online store. The oh. longer the online store okay. is up, you know, I Did, just have sales coming in. Okay, so you're making the guitar picks yourself. So to John's point, it, you know, it, you're saying when you make them, um, but the orders are coming in even on the days you're not working, correct? Correct, yeah. So if you make $1,000 a month just working one day a week, if you were to work five days a week, you'd make $5,000 a month? Uh, potentially. I mean, yeah. Uh, that's a big difference no, between no, yes No, I'm going to tell you, no, that's not the case. Because, Benjamin, you're making the picks. So you're sitting there in your apartment or wherever, and you're making the picks. And the orders are coming in regardless. So you making the picks themselves – doesn't make the orders come in more. So you so that's that's the scary part. It's you can't, not going to scale like you think it will. It's not going to scale like you think it is because what's going to happen is, is is you need to figure out what would cause the orders to 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 pick up. So maybe I spend a little bit more time working on the marketing piece or the you know or the social media advertising piece or whatever and let's get some more orders in. But before we do that, let's go what happens if my orders went up 10% 15%, 20%, maybe go 5, 10, 15, 20, and go, oh, that means I'd have to make this much. At what point do you become uh, limited in your ability to make the picks, and now you got to train somebody else to do it? Does that make sense, Benjamin? Yeah, totally. And and I've been thinking about all that, too. And so, Well, then here's right, my point. You know, I would start easing ahead. into it. So, so, so once you've done that homework and you said you've done it, I'd go, all right, uh, I'm going to spend a little bit more time then one day a week, uh, or I'm going to add an additional three or four hours on that one day a week, and I'm going to focus on driving more orders. And let's see if that works. I would not commit to this thing full time yet. I would ease into it. Let's see if we can incrementally, because you're the only manufacturer right now, correct? Correct. So that could be eventually a problem, a good problem, but it could also sink you. So you've got to think through this, and let's go incrementally on, all right, let's see if I can raise my orders, and if I raise it by this much, I can still keep up with it. At what point do I get to a point where I need to train somebody how to make these picks with flowers in them? And as you're building this thing, uh, Dave spoke to the company, Dave Ramsey spoke to the company a, f a few weeks ago talking about how he used to have to go early to events and set all the chairs up to himself, yep. speak at the event, sign books and talk to everybody and then when everyone went home take all the stuff down himself and so this idea that you got to be doing a lot of both and is what i'm saying yeah yeah and when so. you're building a new niche market you got to do both and both and and you That's have right. late nights early mornings yes. for a long season yep. before this stuff takes yep. off on its and own and here's the temptation benjamin and other entrepreneurs listen to me there's a big temptation because what he's doing has got some real mo. It's cool, man. It's got some momentum. I mean, he's making half. You know, he's, he's making about a thousand bucks. And it starts to feel like, oh, I can go do this. I could scale this now. No. Stick every nickel mm -hmm. that you're making now back into the business to yep. prepare for the long haul. And the biggest mistake that entrepreneurs make is they try to go full time too soon. Yes. Because we're excited about it. It's our idea. People are actually buying it. Oh, I want to get it out there. And it's like, whoa. Yep. It's my favorite scene from Braveheart where the English army is thundering down on William Wallace and his merry men from Scotland. They got those long spears. And he goes, hold. Hold, <laughs> and the horses get closer. Hold, it's like, hey, hold. There'll be a time to go full time, and it will be very, very evident. You'll know it. That's right. Hey, we had a blast. Appreciate Thanks. you, Doctor John too, man. Deloney. I want to say thanks to our producer James Childs, our associate producer today, Zach Bennett, and we want to thank you, America. This is the Dave Ramsey Show.